Every day, animals fight against the forces of nature. They adapt to the climate, learn to disguise themselves, get used to dangers, and learn to be faster and bolder. But sometimes, the struggle for their lives brings them to their death. The first thing you think of when it comes to animals trying to protect themselves is, of course, threats coming from other animals. The vast majority of living creatures are constantly preyed on, so they have to adapt. I think I mentioned how zebras use their stripes to confuse predators? Some scientists suggest it works when zebras move in herds. Imagine something covered with vertical stripes moving very quickly in front of you. Of course you'll feel dizzy. Even if you're not a lion. To learn more about the defense strategies of animals, Steve watched a cool documentary, Defenses, on Magellan TV. Mimicry, toads with poisonous skin, zebras with stripes, powerful jaws of hyenas, and... Hold on, I wanted to give you a summary, but then I thought it'd be better if you just saw it with your own eyes. All the defense strategies in the animal world and all the most exciting stuff that can be found only in the animal arms race is featured in a 26-minute video. Amazing footage in 4K quality, no ads. Seriously, at some point I was so captivated I forgot I actually had some research to do. You can watch the Defenses documentary and many others for free. You'll find a link for a one-month free trial in the description below. And yes, Magellan TV offers scientific content on every topic, from nature and history to space and health. All the stuff I'm excited about. You can watch Magellan TV from any device, laptop, TV, or smartphone. Let me remind you, a link to a one-month free trial is in the description. <sighs> oh well, I guess I need to get back to my video. Let's focus on what animals can do to survive in the wild. I have a scene for you showing how brutal this struggle can be. Serengeti National Park. Many wildebeest see a thunderstorm on the horizon and go towards it, knowing that the grass they eat grows after the rain. They're driven by such a strong instinct to follow the rains, they're ready to overcome any obstacle, even the Mara River. It's the most dangerous obstacle. This river flows through Kenya and Tanzania, and according to eyewitnesses, it doesn't look very impressive. About 131 feet wide, brown, and muddy. Not the place you'd call the river of life and death. However, some 1.2 million wildebeest cross the Mara on their annual migration following the rains, and an average of 6,250 animals drown or are trampled during the crossing. Just think about it more than 6,000 animals every year. That's the equivalent biomass of 10 blue whales dropped in a river. Sometimes the death toll is even greater. In 2007, 10,000 dead wildebeest were reported. Let me remind you, the river's not wide enough to cause so many casualties. Maybe the wildebeest should take turns diving into the water, and this would help. Well, they don't. A huge number of animals gather on the shore before plunging into the water, as if they're waiting for a green light and don't even know what awaits them. This, by the way, happens not only to wildebeests, they're accompanied by zebras, and they help each other during this journey. But their collective mind is not enough to save them from the river of death. As soon as the animals plunge into the water, as if on command, a terrible stampede ensues. Even at this stage, hundreds of wildebeest are dying. But the most difficult part is just ahead. The first challenge the animals have to overcome is a strong current. Over the past three years, water levels in the Mara River have been running dangerously high, in part due to deforestation in the watershed. Yes, wildebeest can swim, but not everyone has enough strength to fight the river. Many are simply taken downstream, and an unequal battle with the swift current claims the lives of thousands of animals. Aside from the strong current, the river's full of other dangers, crocodiles. They're always lurking around when the wildebeest plunge into the water, waiting for the perfect moment to attack. Mara is actually known for its ferocious predators, and for crocodiles, the migration period is like a lunch buffet delivered right to you. Of course, they have to watch out for the hooves, but when so much prey gets into the river at the same time, I don't think it's possible to stay hungry here. Just turn your head and bite whoever's closer. 
The next problem the wildebeest have to deal with is the wrong direction. I've already mentioned the migration of 2007 when 10,000 wildebeest died. Many suffered that day only because they started to cross the river in the wrong place. If you think that wildebeest choose the safest proven route every year, then pff, they don't have any plan. No one knows why the animals choose a specific place to cross to the other side. There will never be any logic, or at least some understandable pattern behind this. The wildebeest just throw themselves into the water and then can't get out because the bank on the other side's too steep. They crush each other, and it's a terrible scene to watch. Nature doesn't go easy on them. Many wildebeest drown because they can't fight the current or can't get to the other bank. Some of them are killed by crocodiles, but even those who make it to the other side can't relax just yet because hungry lions and hyenas are expecting them. Perhaps in any other situation, the wildebeest would have time to escape. Moreover, there are many of them. Who wants to mess with such a huge herd? But the crossing takes too much strength from the animals, and dozens of wildebeest die, becoming prey to lions and hyenas. I find an eyewitness who saw the wildebeest climbing up the shore, then changing its mind and rushing into the water again. Maybe it spotted dangerous predators and decided it was safer to turn back? Spoiler, this went bad. Now imagine what it looks like, a river swirling with a huge number of wildebeests, crocodiles, lions, and hyenas that charge at them, and the incredible death toll. You remember this figure, right? 10,000 dead animals? Since we're talking about Africa, the carcasses quickly start to give off a putrid smell. And it's disgusting. If you've ever smelled it, you know what I'm talking about. If not, you're really lucky. The bloated, rotting carcasses of wildebeest fill the Mara River, and it's terrifying to watch. Some visitors to the Serengeti Park who come to watch the migration simply can't stand the smell and clutch handkerchiefs to their faces. However, this doesn't stop people from taking pictures of dead animals. After all, this is what these wildlife fans come for. It's believed that wildebeest migration attracts about 300,000 tourists every year, and it's unlikely that these people have no clue what this wildebeest chase for rains is all about. While it's clear how people learn of the migration, they can find information on the internet, animals obviously have their own ways of getting the news. It's believed that vultures have such a keen sense of smell that they can smell carrion more than 0.9 miles away. Now, imagine how strong the river of death smells if the vultures cover more than 60 miles to feast there. Or maybe they're getting some kind of notification. Actually, the smell probably isn't the most important thing here. Vultures often follow large herds of wildebeest, because where there's a large herd, there will definitely be something to eat. That's how wildlife works. Somebody dies all the time. Moreover, the vultures seem to know not only where their potential prey is, but also when they'll get a chance for dinner. They follow wildebeest herds during the dry season when the mortality rate is definitely higher. As for why they do it, I've already explained it earlier. Well, it's almost time. A bit more. That's it, let's fly! And I can guess what question came to your mind. In any case, I asked Steve right away, why not build bridges? Hell, a huge number of animals die every year. Isn't it high time people stepped in and helped? We're building bridges across highways to stop animals from dying after collisions with cars. Well, and save people from getting injured as well. Today, underpasses and overpasses for animals exist all over the world, and everyone uses them. Deer, elephants, bears, turtles, crabs, even salmon. How are wildebeests any different? Actually, they aren't. But unlike all animals that use bridges, migrating wildebeests are not threatened by people or their cars, but by nature itself. And if a large number of wildebeests stop dying, the consequences will be, let's say, quite nasty. The population of wildebeests and zebras, let me remind you, they also migrate at the same time, will rise, and with it, the number of diseases and genetic issues. Natural selection will stop working to a certain extent, the number of crocodiles and other scavengers will drop because they'll have nothing to eat. But there will be more predators on the other side. A lot of prey will reach them. And although all of these seem like minor changes, they could lead to the collapse of the entire ecosystem of the national park. No matter how weird it may sound, but the death of thousands of wildebeest is a clever plan designed by nature itself. I called the Mara River the river of life and death for a reason. Because dead animals really give life to the entire river. Crocodiles only eat a small fraction of the carcasses because 
Well, let's be honest, it did take a lot of crocodiles to consume all the dead wildebeests. After the predators are no longer hungry, the forces of nature come into play. The main contribution of drowned wildebeests to the ecosystem is their skeletons. Wildebeest bones take about seven years to decompose, slowly leaching out phosphorus. This element is critical for the growth of plants and animals. Plus, these bones are a breeding ground for the slimy membrane of bacteria, which serves as food for fish. Well, of course, they also eat wildebeest meat, but this is obvious. So nature knows very well what it's doing when it kills so many wildebeests every year. They don't bother other animals, unlike hippos. Yes, hippos are also happy to eat wildebeest carcasses if they come across them, but that's not the point here. More than 4,000 hippos live in the Kenyan part of the Mara River. They all eat well, resulting in a lot of poop. Every day, about 19,000 pounds of hippo feces are washed into the river. When it rains, all this mass goes downstream and deprives the fish of oxygen. Yeah, fish actually die because hippos have very active digestion. I could never expect that I'd come across such a scientific article one day, but that's a story for another time. If you're interested, I'll tell it someday. See you later.